Hi everybody, Merry Christmas. I'm back with my horrific ugly sweater dress. They went over so well yesterday that um, we decided to do it all over again today. I apologize about the lighting in here. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, that's a little bit better. Before I get into the message that I have from Adam for your loved ones with tips on how to survive the holidays without your family and how to survive the holidays while you're inside, I just want to pass along some, um, just my thoughts about today because I was going back and forth in text with a couple of women and a few people are having the same issues today. They're saying that they're trying to be strong but they're crying and they feel like they're so weak. And the thing is, you guys, sometimes the strength lies within the tears. Sometimes the strength comes out when you cry. It doesn't make you a weak person. It doesn't make you... It doesn't say that define you or say that you can't get through this because you cried. And this one woman was so sweet and she was saying that she was putting on a strong, a brave face, putting on a front for her husband. And she, as soon as she hung up the phone, she began to cry. And she said that she just, she felt so weak and she felt like she wasn't able to do it this holiday season. And my thought was, you're so strong. The fact that you were able to conceal the tears and hold them back so you didn't upset him shows how strong you are. Just because you have a breakdown, I mean, gosh, you're human. We have breakdowns in there. I am 100% positive. When those doors lock, sometimes behind them, there are guys in there sniffling with tissues. So uh, just embrace them. Embrace your emotions and make sure that you're feeling them, allowing them to come out so you can move, work through them and move past them. Otherwise, you're going to get to the point where you keep pushing them down and you explode. So there's nothing wrong with crying. There's nothing weak about crying. Before I get started, you guys, with this message from Adam, um, I just want to introduce myself for any new members. My name is Ro. I'm the founder of SPWF, and I use my years of experience to help support you while your loved one is gone and well beyond the duration of the sentence. I try to empower, support, and um, love you guys. Sorry, I have family downstairs. I hear people coming upstairs. That's why I kind of got distracted. So um, really quickly. I, um, as you guys know, hi Tracy, hi, I said hi to Lauren, if you guys, I see there's four people, um, I sound very quiet, I'm trying to be very quiet because I have family downstairs and, um, I need to get this done before I go down there and start, it's been like one of those crazy hectic mornings where I cooked and I cleaned and I did everything and then I literally just hopped in the shower, fixed my face, fixed my hair, got dressed and everybody showed up so I have to hurry up, but, um, hi Dawn, if I, Guys, I said it yesterday, and I'll say it again. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the hearts. Keep them coming. Um, write in the comments where you're from. Write in the comments how you're doing this holiday. Write in the comments with whatever you need help with, and other sisters can support you. Because I said last night on our Christmas Eve video that um, sometimes you just need to ask for help. And, and surrendering by asking for support and asking for help when you feel down, when you feel like you're having a weak moment, comment and let everybody know. And don't forget that... Um, we also have the private group, which is hashtag Invisible Shackles, dash Strong Prison Lives and Families. If somebody could write that in the comments, I'd really appreciate it. But we have that because we have our main like page that I'm on right now. But we also have been asked for a really long time, probably years, to um, create make that page private. Unfortunately, we can't make this great page private because it's so old. It doesn't have that capabilities. So those capabilities. So we created that additional page in order to to help you guys, to give you what you asked for. Um, and you guys can post right on there. It doesn't have to go through the inbox. Um, it's, it's, it's really active. There are a lot of really fun, funny threads going on. So this is, um, as you guys know, I scheduled two or three separate videos, attempts to have a live interview with Coochie, who um, did 10 years in the feds, got out six months ago. And he has been so gracious in offering us his advice and his expertise. And just a point of view from somebody that is going through exactly what our loved ones are going through to give us that perspective. Well, unfortunately, our schedules could not coordinate and we couldn't get that done um, before Christmas. So, hi, Michelle. Um, so, Adam decided to step in and he said, I'm going to send you um, my thoughts. And I thought he was going to send me how to have us on the outside from his perspective, how to help us go through it. But then when I read it, it's so sweet because it's for your loved one. So if you guys want to take notes, if you want to grab a pen and a paper, if not, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to post it on a blog on the spwfstrongprisonwise.com website. And then um, we'll have our admin link it 
on the pages so you guys can copy it and send them over to him because they're like, hint, hint, hint. Um, and Adam is so supportive of those of us on the outside because, first of all, the years that I wasn't back in his life yet, he had to do this all alone. So he knows what it's like to go through holidays without having any support, to go through years without having any visits. He also um, thinks that, you know, he, he just respects us that are doing this, that are kind of like in waiting or that are, um, that sacrifice so much to do this for them. And he's always trying to support guys and, ex and, and coach them through and teach them how to support us the best because a lot of guys like to play games and he wants to make sure that they're not doing that and they respect us. So I'm going to read you guys top five tips to help you power through the holidays. You can be a one and done and tap all five. So he means you could just take one, take what you get from this, try one or try them all at the same time. And it's really funny because he never read my how to survive the holidays without him videos. And some of them kind of like over my tips that I gave on the first one and the second one, you guys, if you still need help, those videos are pinned to the top of this page. They're pinned to the top of our invisible shackles page and they're all over our social media because I know you guys, as well as I sometimes need all the support we can get on the holidays. So. He said, the last thing any of us should be doing during the holidays is sitting around sulking, thinking about what we might be missing out on this year. Plenty of people have endured similar situations or even far worse and gone on to accomplish great things. Like the former principal at Strawberry Mansion High School in Philadelphia, who grew up in some tough, in the same tough neighborhood as her students and became famous for her saying, so what, now what? In other words, snap out of it already. There's no reason for us to stay stuck in the past thinking about what already happened or what might have been when we can instead press on to greater achievements of the future. All we have to do is take the first step forward. So how exactly do we do that? And you guys, that doesn't have to be just for your loved ones. I mean, we could take that to our hearts and we can learn something from that. He's so right. You don't have to be a victim of your circumstance. Okay. Remember yesterday in our video, and if you didn't watch the, um, the video that I made on Christmas Eve, go back and watch that after this. But I said that I was listening to that video and I got those tips. Well, the tip that I got about your basically staying low level and, and living like the criminal if you don't forgive, which it probably doesn't make sense to you guys that didn't watch the video, but go back and watch it and it will, was um, a tip that this woman that I was listening to got from, you ready, a mother who lost her child in Connecticut when that shooting happened at the elementary school. And I can't remember the name of it right now, Sandy Hook Elementary School. And she went on to become, not become a victim of her circumstance, which she had absolutely every right to do to become bitter and sad, but she became a motiv motivational speaker and she's helping to nix that. She's helping to help other parents through. She's helping to ensure that this doesn't happen to other parents. She's doing her part instead of becoming sad, instead of becoming a basket case instead of becoming angry and staying down there and unforgiving she chose to forgive and move forward and use her circumstances use her struggles in a way that is constructive so um again this woman in philadelphia in philadelphia says so what now what so just when you feel like it's horrible and this is the worst thing that could have ever happened to you take a couple steps back and think no, it's not. And think about people that have it worse. We're alive. We're breathing. Our husbands aren't in the ground. So think of it, think of it from that point of view and that can help. And also, this is written again for their perspective. They're alive. They're breathing. Of course, they're not in the, in the most, um, in the best place or situation, obviously. But again, they're not in the ground. So number one tip from Adam to your loved ones is to get moving. When you can't get out of your head, it's best to just get up and move. Simply doing something physical is going to pull you out of your head and force you to become fully present and focused on your actions. Set a goal for yourself based on a certain amount of time, distance, reps, or any other metric you choose, and then just go do it. Achieving that goal is going to give you a win to build on along with a sense of accomplishment that helps power you through the rest of the day in good spirits. So number one is to make sure you get moving. So, and especially for guys on the inside, that's something that really they use. Majority of them use moving their body and exercise to cope with so many things. So when they're feeling down, of course, they can think about that they don't have it the worst, that there's other people have it 
out there are worse. They don't have it the worst. There's other people that have it worse. That was hard for me to say. But also, go out there, set a goal, try to do it, move your body, set a physical goal. And then you'll be able to point to those wins so then you feel like you've accomplished something and that'll help power you into being in a good mood and being good in good spirits. Number two, he says, make a list. Now is the perfect time for you to take a few moments to celebrate all of the wins, both big and small, that you've racked up throughout the year. Take out a sheet of paper and write them all down. Go ahead and list everything that comes to mind, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem. This list is only for you, so don't worry about what anyone else would say or think about your responses. And that's something, you guys, that you guys can do together, that you and your loved one can do together in some point in this week coming up before New Year's, that you can reflect on your year behind you and you can make a list of, um, of, let's see, what did he say? Of all of your wins, of your big and small wins, everything that comes to mind, no matter if it's small or huge, anything. So here's his example. He says, let's say you've been working out consistent, can't speak today, consistently three days a week throughout the year. For some people, that might not seem like much of a win because it's simply become a part of your normal routine. However, when you stop and consider that all those small victories each week have piled up to over 150 fitness wins for the year, now that's big. See, that's a great way to look at it. Those consistent small wins have had a huge impact on your overall health and well-being this past year. By writing them down, it helps to put all of those wins into perspective and give you plenty of momentum rolling into the new year. Number three, now you're going to make another list. When you've had a chance to reflect on all you've accomplished this past year, now it's time to begin looking forward to the wins you'd like to rack up in the year ahead. Imagine yourself one year from now sitting down and making a list of all of your wins. What are your big achievements? What are big achievements you really want to see at the top of that list? And what else? Make a list of all the things you intend to accomplish and then celebrate next year at this time. Write it all down. This is going to be your list of goals for the year ahead. Success doesn't happen by accident or nor by luck. It's all about identifying what you really want and then investing the same time and energy needed to achieve it. The key is to figure out exactly what it is that you want and to be specific. Guys, remember we spoke about this in the interview with Pucci? Find out exactly what it is that you want and be specific when you add it to your list of goals. Simply saying you want to be in better shape next year isn't good enough because round is a shape and I don't think anyone is going for that look. So what exactly is it, is it that you want to accomplish? I prefer to focus on physical performance goals because they're the easiest to track and assess. One of my goals might be I want to run five miles in under 40 minutes or maybe I want to do five sets of handstand push-ups, lean against the wall and touching the crown of my head to the ground each rep for a total of 10 reps each set. Or how about I want to see those six-pack abs that have been hiding just out of sight when I look in the mirror on May 1st. Those are all very specific goals that I'll know for certain whether or not I achieve them at the end of the year. Whatever it is you want to accomplish this year, whether it's a physical goal, a learning goal, or something much bigger that you've been working towards for years, this is the way to make it happen. Write it down and then get to work on it. You can make this your best year ever. It's entirely up to you. <sighs> Adam is so wordy. I love him, but he's so wordy. I'm getting a headache. I'm not breathing while I'm reading. <laughs> um, what do you guys think so far? Post your comments. Um, and then I promise it's really wordy and it's probably, and I'm talking kind of quiet and I'm talking kind of fast. I'm trying to get through this. So I promise this will be posted probably not today, but posted at some point, um, on the website, strongprisonwife.com, and then we'll pull it in so you guys can take these and you can pass it along to your loved ones. If you want to print them and mail them, if you want to email them, whatever it is, however you guys communicate. Um, and it's something that will, I mean, it's not only just to get through the holidays, although that's what this was written for. And I didn't get it until late, la later last night. But it's something that you guys can work towards. You could set goals for the year ahead. Even if you, let's say, decide, oh, in May, oops, I forgot to send that, and you want to send it, you could set them for the next 12 months, May to May. There's no rules on this. Okay, number five. Last one. How about a little more to those who may need it the most? Listen, girls, this one's about us. 
right now it might not seem like it, but the people suffering the most this holiday season are our loved ones on the outside. They often feel guilty for celebrating without us, and that's just not right. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in our own emotions, especially this time of year, that we lose sight of how difficult it is for them out there without us. It's our responsibility to man up and make this season all about them instead of ourselves. They deserve all of our love and appreciation because they give it to you tirelessly. Can I get some likes and hearts for this man? They give it to us, I'm sorry, they give it to you tirelessly throughout the rest of the year. Whether you express your feelings in a card, an email, or a phone call, they're certain to bring a smile to your loved one's face. And by making this season all about them, meaning us, I promise you'll end up with a smile on your face too. Whenever you call the next time, be sure to remember that your emotions are contagious and put a smile on your face before you begin speaking. They too can hear your smile and if they weren't smiling when they answered, they will be by the time the phone cuts off. Happy holidays. Okay, so number five, you guys, is definitely one you probably want to print and send to him. Be like, um, some dude in feds that's been there for 20 years just, you know, passed along these tips and I think you might want to see them. You got you girls. But honestly, um, that's something that we talk about all the time and I know it works for me and it's something you guys can take out of this. I don't know. This is like totally scientifically proven. The last time I heard it was in a book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Like I just heard about this book and I started listening to it on my way to my last visit. And Adam was like, like that's the, when I told him what I was listening to, he's like, he goes, it's like the most popular book ever. I had no idea. Anyway, the trick is to smile when you an- smile before you answer the phone and the other person can literally hear your smile on the other end. So I always try, no matter what I'm into, um, is when especially I see unknown, when I know it's coming from him, I stop, I take a breath, especially if I'm in a bad mood, and I try to answer the phone with a smile, with a happy voice. It's so much better, you guys. Honestly, when he calls you on Christmas, do you want to spend the call crying because you miss him? Or do you want to spend the call making each other laugh and being happy? It's not easy. It's so hard. It's heartbreaking, you guys, to be alone, to be around couples. I get it. I've been through it for so many years. But try to make the most out of the minutes that you have. Try to make the most out of what you do have. Try to focus on all of the stuff that you have working in your favor, hi Megan, then um, as opposed to crying to him on the phone and yelling at him on the phone and guilting him. And I saw that Sherry said, I felt so guilty. I'm not celebrating again until he comes home. Sweetie, honey, you have to, have to, have to find a way to pull yourself out of that prison that you're putting yourself in. Because first of all, You only live once, not to be cheesy with that YOLO phrase, but for the amount of years that he's gone, you can't put yourself in jail too. You have to learn how to celebrate. It's going to help you get through every other day. It's going to put you in the proper mindset to deal with this. It's going to make you, listen, this is the biggest one. I promise I was, I put myself in my own prison for a while too until I learned about this phenomenon that we all do. So you're not abnormal for doing this, but please, sweetheart, you have to find a way to be able to be happy and celebrate and go out and do things while he's gone, or you're going to, keyword, listen to me, you guys, closely, all of you, not just Sherry, but all of you, you're going to start resenting him. You're going to start resenting the situation, and resentment is the demise. It is the death of any relationship, so please figure it out. Doesn't mean you have to go swinging from the chandeliers. Doesn't mean you have to go dance on tabletops or bars. It means that you have to incorporate this into your life and not make it your whole life because I've been there and I developed the most excruciating and crippling anxiety, paranoia, panic, because I was just so socially anxious all the time when I was trying to or not allowing myself to do it. So please, honey, I, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent, but um, post in the groups if you need help. We're starting, um, Megan is starting in Texas. We're piloting a meetup program where Texas wives are going to start meeting up. And eventually, when that one takes off, and it's going to take a while because we have a lot of work to do to get this 
uh, to hit the ground and run with this. But once that takes off in Texas, after Megan gets that going for a little while, we're going to roll that out to other states. So that's something that, you know, for me, it helps to hang out and go out and celebrate with other people in my position that can understand versus just laying under a blanket and not getting out of bed because all that does is lead to pain, more pain than you need to be in, loneliness, and resentment. So with that, you guys, um, I'm sorry I read most of this video. I didn't realize it was so, so wordy or I probably would have broken it up, made a blog, and then talked about it versus reading it to you guys. But hopefully you guys got something out of it, um, especially that number five because basically he's like, those girls are amazing for being able to those girls meaning all of us and and prison husbands of course um being able to do this and and he's saying that our loved ones on the inside need to appreciate us so that's coming from somebody that that is living it if you need to copy and paste that girls you and men send that over so um that's it you guys i hope you have a wonderful holiday i have to go downstairs and get with my family sorry that it's so quiet but um i hear the kids all like yelling down there and i don't want to distract anybody and make them come like rumbling in here because that would be terrible so you guys keep staying strong keep loving strong keep supporting them Keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. But in the meantime, please, you still have the half of the day today and you still have a couple of weeks for the Christmas season. If you can just do one thing, Sherry, go back and watch those videos, um, part one and two of my videos on how to survive the holidays without him. I made them two years apart. I put in a challenge there for you to do one thing, just one small thing to celebrate and you're going to feel so much better because a lot of the times it's in our head, just the thought of doing it we get so stuck in our heads that um we're like no i'm not doing it but once you're there you're like oh this is great and even if it's not then you went there and you did it and then you're like all right five minutes later all right i'm gonna go home but you did it and you took that step so i'm i went into that in much longer detail in those videos um but hopefully those will help and for not just sherry but everybody make sure you have this week my challenge to you is to do something to celebrate to do something for you to do something let go of the guilt let go of all of that let go of the misery let go of the vicarious imprisonment and make sure that you're doing one thing at least to celebrate me i'm going downstairs to celebrate right now because i never have a problem doing it anymore i did for a while so know that there's a you can get through it there's another side of it there's another end of it um and if you need ideas or tips or support in doing it go post on spwf on her page and on invisible shackles okay you guys merry christmas lots of